Oh, Mike here. Another day with the uh, modular uh, cooling unit. I, uh, I changed out the compressor this morning. Um, I removed that compressor right down there. It's quarter horsepower. Uh, came out of a uh, um, um, mini fridge. Uh, I wanna, yeah, yeah, mini fridge. That's right. And I uh, swapped it out for this one from a mini fridge. Now it's about half the capacity in terms of displacement, in terms of uh, wattage. Uh, it's a little bit louder. Uh, it's uh, R600A. Came out of a uh, little mini fridge with a freezer on top, fridge on bottom. Um, it didn't have any isobutane left in it, so I uh, I pulled it out. That's all I really wanted. Got it for thirty bucks. I was pretty happy with that. So it took me about an hour and a half to swap out the compressor. Um, of course, I had to remove the the uh, the original fittings. Now my brazing here is really ugly. I'm actually kind of ashamed of it. I was running short on propane. Um, my my fuel I used to braze with, so I wasn't able to get the heat, and it ended up pretty ugly. So uh, I found a bottle of map gas and switched over to that and was able to uh, to clean it up a little bit. Um, so I ran it a bit this morning. Um, I maintained the same cap tubes, four feet of uh, 031. Um, didn't really know if there was going to be much difference. Um, well, I assumed there was going to be a difference, but the uh, best thing to do was just to swap out the compressor and observe the operation and then adjust it accordingly. Right now, it seems to be working pretty well. I pulled the temperature of my uh, glycol bucket that's in there now, about 20 pounds of propylene glycol in water. Uh, pulled that temperature down to uh, 15. See, it's 16.5 right now. And the air temperature inside is 38.5. There's no circulating fan inside. Just going for natural, natural circulation, natural convection. Uh, later on, I will um, uh, want to use a different style of container for the glycol and also look into uh, building some baffles to get some natural circulation going on in there. Uh, probably not going to do that in this con um, cabinet here. I'll probably switch over to a larger cabinet like that one right there. Um, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Compressor is a little bit louder than the old compressor. It's actually a fair amount louder. I don't know if it was designed like that or if uh, uh, it was damaged. Uh, maybe it's got a bent spring or something in there. Uh, but it doesn't rattle or bang or anything. But it, it's it's a little noisier. So uh, not really a issue, but uh, not right now at least. I did overload it once. Um, I don't know if I wasn't paying attention and I overcharged the thing. I'm, I had to be sucking liquid back and uh, tripped the thermal. So uh, that works. So... Um, Pulls about anywhere from 90.95 amp up to uh, about 1.1 amp. Uh, when I tripped that thermal, it was it was up over like 1.3. I couldn't react fast enough before it tripped. So uh, um, got her back in line. Don't know the exact charge yet. Um, so I'm running this thing with um, uh, kind of on a on a cycle. I don't have a thermostat or temperature controller on it yet. I have one in the mail on the way, and uh, so I ran the other compressor yesterday in refrigeration temperatures. I'm looking for about 34 to 38 degrees. Now, you can see we're holding at about 38 right now. Uh, that's the upper end. Um, when I shut the compressor off 15 minutes ago, it was at about uh, 40 degrees. So it continues to, to, to do some uh, uh, refrigeration, you know, refrigerative work. Um, so I ran this thing most of the day yesterday. Um, I kind of did some crude uh, graphing here of the performance. That green line there is the compressor. Uh, initially, I was cycling between 20 and 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I decided to switch to go to about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. At one point, I wasn't paying attention, pulled it down to 12. You can see the pink line there. Uh, that's the cabinet temperature. Um, I was getting about a holdover of something like uh, three and a half hours. So it would run for about a half an hour and off for three and a half hours, but um, I don't have enough information to really get a good idea of the the, um, the characteristics of this box with this arrangement. Um, and with this compressor, it's going to be a little different. It took about 45 minutes to pull the um, coolant temperature from about 60 degrees down to uh, 15 degrees. Um, and then I expect as the total temperature in the box and everything decreases, uh, the next cycle of the compressor is going to be even less than that. But I'm, I'm expecting to see somewhere around three to four hours of hold over time. Um, so that's uh, that's good. Um, it's just going to take several hours, probably. Well, really, all all of today to get a good idea what the characteristics are of this box. Um, but uh, eh, you know, it's working. Got me a little busy today. Um, I have to do a little bit of brazing this morning, a little bit of bending. 
I had to make that piece and I had to make this piece to adapt because uh, the uh, suction and the discharge go straight out that way instead of up like the other one. So I had to do some, some changes there, but no big deal. Uh, so I'm going to continue to observe and uh, probably make another video here maybe tonight or tomorrow. So thanks for watching.